What's up, y'all? And welcome to Warfare Wednesday. As y'all are coming in, we are about to get our worship sounds going, so y'all already know what it is. Just take these first two minutes of this live to just breathe. Inhale <clears throat> and exhale. And inhale, call a little phlegm in my throat. <clears> throat> Amen. Inhale and exhale. Inhale God and all things that he has for you on today. And exhale anything that you woke up with that was not like him. Or anything, even if you didn't wake up with something like something that may be on the back of your mind. Any worry, any fear, any doubt, any anxiousness. Exhale all of that. And inhale God in this moment, okay? And I am going to pray us in. So y'all just take these two minutes to breathe while I pray us in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you for this wonderful Wednesday that you have brought us here, God. Thank you, Lord, for seeing fit to give us another day, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that endures, Father God, that is new every morning, that is steadfast, that is merciful. Thank you, Father, for your love and kindness, for your gentleness, your faithfulness, your goodness, your patience with us, God, your faithfulness. Thank you, God. God, we honor you on today. We honor you on this wonderful Wednesday. We give you all praise. We give you all glory because you are worthy, not just for what you can do and how you can do it, but because we real deal love you, God, like for real. Like for real, for real. And help us to continue to prove it with our obedience, Lord. By doing the things you tell us to do, going the places you tell us to go, saying the things that you tell us to say. Help us to show you, God, our hearts for you, Lord. Holy Spirit. You have full range to do whatever it is that you want to do on today. Right now, in this very moment, I give this live over to you. Have your way, whatever it is that you want to do on today. Let it be done, whatever it is that you want to reveal, whatever it is that you want to show. However it is that you want to move, move on today, God. And let it be to your glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. In this moment, may it be all of you and none of me. Get me out the way so that you can have your way. I submit to you. I surrender to you. And I lay my life down as a sacrifice for you. Use me, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Good morning, Chelsea. How you doing? Okay, you on your lunch break. That's what I'm talking about. Coming to Warfare Wednesdays on your lunch break, okay? So, um, <clears throat> this Warfare Wednesday today, we are praying for unfailing faith. Because y'all know, um, last week, we um, prayed for the things that come up against us. Us, the opposition that comes up against us when we're trying to be obedient when God calls us to do something or when he tells us to go somewhere and um, when he gives us a task or an assignment you know and we're trying to implement those things out of obedience to him to show him that we love him that we trust him that we honor him and that we choose to live a faithful life to him sometimes while we're doing that opposition comes up against us right and so we prayed against we prayed against that opposition, the warfare that comes as we walk out our callings, right? And so today we are praying for unfailing faith because a lot of the times we have faith and believe for God to do something because we're um obedient and then things come up against that faith too. Like sometimes we have a lot of disappointment that goes on this journey that we're on. And then sometimes things don't pan out the way that we want them to. And then sometimes we just be having a whole bunch of 
anxiety and impatience that has nothing to do with God, things that he doesn't give us. And we're holding on to those things, right? So today we are praying for unfailing faith as we continue to walk out our cause in obedience to God. Good morning, Kane. Good morning, Tyler. Okay, so as y'all know, we got to read our basic scripture for Warfare Wednesday. And y'all know it's Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, because that is how we come in for Warfare Wednesday, being strong in the Lord, right? So Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So that will forever be our basic scripture for Warfare Wednesday, okay? Because we have to have on the full armor of God. And we broke down each piece of the armor in their own week. So if you missed that, make sure you go out and check out the weeks prior to today. But today we are praying for unfailing faith. And I have one scripture regarding that. And then like a few bonus ones. <clears throat> so as y'all know, we're walking out this journey. Um, good morning, Mama Tina. Okay, so as y'all know, we are walking out our faith walk. We're walking in this journey to obedience, the callings that God has placed on our lives. We're literally implementing them. The things that he is telling us to do, we're doing it. The places where he's telling us to go, we're going. The things he's telling us to say, we are saying we're operating in obedience. So during that time, we can feel attacked in our faith in God. Things may not go the way that we thought them should thought they should go. Things may not happen the way we thought they should happen. Sometimes a lot of opposition comes up. And although we prayed against opposition in our call last week, this kind of opposition that comes up against your faith is literally here to disappoint you so that you no longer do the will of God. Everything that God has placed inside of you for you to do. If your faith is attacked, if you're tossed to and fro in that area of your faith, then you ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to do nothing. And that is not the will of God for our lives because God is not a stagnant God. He's always moving. He's always on the move. So that way we should be too, right? We should take that example to know that if... If I am feeling stuck right now, if my faith is dwindling, if this area of my life is not progressing, then I need to check my faith. I need to see, do I really trust God? And a lot of times with trusting God, that literally just means having patience to know that he going to come through for you, having patience to know everything is going to line up the way that it's supposed to be, that your steps are literally going to be ordered. Because that's what he promises us. He said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Right? So, today's um, key scripture that we're going to be covering and praying um, is Luke 22, 31 through 32. And this is Jesus talking to Peter. Because at this moment, Jesus is about to go to the cross he's about to be um crucified 
and he's having a conversation with Peter and Peter, you know, basically like, Lord, I go with you. You know, I'm ride or die for you. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And Jesus foresees the future because I'm about to read what he says. But after he says this, he basically let Peter know like, yeah, you think that's what you're going to be doing. But, you know, by the time the rooster crow three times, you're going to be done denied me. And he already knows that his faith is going to be attacked. He already knows that he's going to come up against opposition. He already knows that he's even going to deny him. But he doesn't let that stop him for praying for him. So Jesus says to Peter in Luke 22 verses 31 and 32, he says, Peter. Oh, and I'm reading this in the Passion Translation because y'all know the Passion Translation give us like some in-depth detail on what's going on here. So Luke 22 and 30, 31 through 32 says, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I am about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this, after you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. And y'all, that is so beautiful because just like I said before, Jesus already knew he was going to deny him. He already knew he was going to be shaken up. He already knew that even when they was going to go to the garden of Gethsemane, Peter was going to act out and dang near cut off dude ear. Or he did cut off dude ear, but you know, Jesus put it back on. He knew all these things that Peter was up to in his heart, the things that were going to take over his mind, all the opposition that he would face. He knew that his faith would be tested. And he said that Satan had obtained permission. Other verses say that, you know, he is just desiring. But this verse right here, this version in the CPT version, let us know that Satan obtained permission. So just like when Satan obtained permission to cause calamity to come upon Job, this is the same thing that he did for Peter and all of the disciples. He like, all right, well, you know, he, he basically went to God like, all right, well, your son, he about to die on the cross, all of that. Like, let me attack the faith of his disciples. Let's see if they're really going to be faithful. Let's see if they're really going to be righteous. Let's see if they're really going to hold on to everything that Jesus told them. And y'all already know how that story pans out because they did. They became apostles. And they started the churches. And they went and proclaimed the gospel after the resurrection. Like their life afterward was so beautiful. Their faith did not fail. So just because the, the enemy may obtain permission to sift you like wheat or to uh, uh, attack you in any way, to, to cause whatever is going on in the spirit world, to, the, the demonic forces to um, come against up your finances or your mind or your spirit or your body, that stuff will not work. Literally, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And though these weapons may be formed, they will not work. Because we already have an expected end from what Jesus already told us. And that's what Jesus wanted us to know in this moment. Of course, he's talking to Peter, but we can apply that to your, our own self. Like, put you, while I'm reading this, put your name in every place that I say, Peter. Okay, I'm going I'm to do it for me. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put my name everywhere it says Peter. And read this again. So this is Luke 22, 31 through 32, the Passion Translation. Portia, my dear friend, listen to what I am about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Portia, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this. After you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. And y'all, that replacing Peter's name with yours gives you the grace to know that God has already given you a calling. He's given you a purpose. He's given you destiny. And you will fulfill those very things that he has placed in your life. And no matter what comes, 
Jesus is praying on our behalf that our faith may not fail in him. And that's something that we can hold on to, to know that we will see and expect it in. And I want to give you all a few scriptures that kind of like back up our prayer for unfailing faith. OK, so one of the bonus scriptures is Philippians one and six, and it says, and I'm reading this in the New King James Version. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And y'all, that's so profound. That's a promise. He who has begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's something we can hold on to. Another one is 1 John 4 and 4. And it says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. So everything that's in the world that's trying to attack your faith and come up against you and cause you to be disappointed and when things don't go your way, cause you to be in some type of frustration or uproar or anxiety or impatience or even being distracted from what you're supposed to be doing. All of those things, you overcome them already because greater is he that is in you than he that is in all of those things and he that is in the world than he that is in anything trying to come up against your faith. Greater is he that's in you. So you have to look inward and go inward and tap into that secret place with God so you can know what he is saying on the inside of you because all you have is all you need. The things on the inside of you is what he wants to pull out. It's how he's going to finish and complete those good works that he started in you. Okay? And then the last one is James 1 and 6. And it says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So in this time of our faith not failing and praying to God about different things while we're on this faith journey, we have to know that we have to trust him with all of our hearts, right? Because if we're not trusting him with all of our hearts, then doubt creeps in. And if doubt begins to creep in, you will be tossed to and fro like the wind. Literally, the thing when he said Satan desires to sift you like wheat, you will be sifted like wheat. If, you're, if you are not standing your ground in things that he told you and the things that he showed you and the things that he revealed to you, regardless of what anybody says to you, regardless of what anybody decides that they want to give you advice for because a, a lot of the times we take what God told us and alter it depending on what people say and he does not have that for us we have to be able to listen to him and follow him and the Bible says if we trust him with all our hearts lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him then he will direct our path. So if he told us to do something, we can trust him and we can lean on him. And though it don't look like what we thought it would or though things are not happening like we thought they would, we don't lean on that understanding. We just acknowledge him in our ways and our paths will be directed. We will be aligned. Literally every crooked path will be made straight on our behalf. Regardless, regardless of anything else that may be going on, regardless of anything else that may be said, like you will not be tossed to and fro. I want to actually read that in the message version. That's James. That was James one and six, which y'all know the message version be grouping them together. So I'm going to read. Um, Good morning, Samantha. How you doing, girl? So I'm going to read James one and it's going to be five through eight because the message version groups them together. So it says. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condensed to and won't be con condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. Because people who worry their prayers are like wind whip, whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all of your options open. 
And the message don't be coming to play when they be, you know, telling people off, okay? The message is basically like the hood version. It's like, it's telling you, you gonna get this word, okay? And they basically saying, don't think you can expect anything from God. If you're gonna be tossed to and fro in your faith in him. If you're going to allow the sifting that the enemy comes to do to take you off your square. If you're going to allow the, the outside voices and people who don't have a revelation of what God gave you and what God said to you, make you go in the opposite direction of what he said. Okay. So again, I'm going to read our key scripture for today and then we're going to pray. So our key scripture and I gave y'all a few bonus ones. I gave y'all Philippians 1 through 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. John 1, 4 and 4, but you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then James 1 and 6, but let him ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Okay, so our basis, our key scripture that we're going to pray for today is Luke 22, 31 through 32 in the Passion Translation. And I'm gonna read it one more time just so that we get it deep down in our spirit. It says, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I am about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this, after you have turned back to me, and have been restored. Make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. Okay? So while we're walking out this walk of faith, when God gives us an assignment or a destination or words to speak, while we're walking in obedience and walking out our callings and our purposes, our faith will be tested and Satan will come to, to sift us like wheat. But Jesus prayed for us that our faith would not fail, right? And so while our faith is not failing, when we get to the other side, because he knew he said, remember, remember this, after you have been turned back to me and been restored, he knew what Peter was going to do. He knew he was going to deny him. He knew he was going to be out here, you know, cutting off people's ears, acting crazy. He knew he was going to wild out, right? He knows that about us too. He knows that sometimes we have doubt. He knows sometimes we have disappointment. He knows sometimes we have frustration. He knows sometimes we just completely don't understand what we're doing, but we're trying our best to be obedient to what he's called us to do, right? But he says, even in that, when you have fully turned back to me and have been fully restored, make it your life min min mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. What does that mean? Tell your testimony. If God gives you a beautiful faith walk, let that walk be known. When you have reached the desired end and when God has allowed you to share it, share that thing. Let people know God told me to go here and I went and this is what he did. God told me to say this and I said it and this is what he did. God told me to do this and I did it and this is what he did. Because what? We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So many people, so many people's faith can be strengthened by your faith, by what God has told you to do and you doing it, by you acting out the call of God on your life. Right? Right? So that is a good place for us to pray on this morning. That is a good place for us to pray. So I'm going to turn our worship sounds back up because it's just so soothing and it gives us peace because a lot of the times while we're walking out, you know, our obedience journeys and living this life of faith, it's so much noise, it's so much chaos, it's so many things going on in the world that desire to take our attention off of what matters most, which is the Father. The Bible says we are to seek him first and all his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. So that's not that's not just material things. That's things like perfect health, perfect peace. Prosperity. Growth. Growth in love, growth in family, growth in business, growth in career. We have so many things that can be added to us as we continue to keep God first. Focus on what matters. And I believe that focusing on him is basically worship. 
So we're going to play our worship soaking sounds as we pray, all hearts and minds clear as we go before the throne of grace on today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, we reference you in this moment. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are almighty. You are all knowing. You are all powerful. You are so strong, God. You are so joyful, so joyful that your joy even gives us strength. You are so wise, God. You are so understanding. You are so patient with us, God. You are literally holy. As the angels declare in heaven, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That is how we reference you on today. We cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Because you are so holy, you are so good. And there is nobody like you, Father. We love you. Right now, in this moment, Father God, we give you our hearts. We yield our hearts to you, God, and we ask that you examine them, Father. See if there is any offensive way in our hearts, Father. And lead us into the way of everlasting. We're sorry, God. We stand in repentance, Father God, with the heart of repentance, Lord, for everything that we have done that was not like you, God, everything that we have thought that was not like you, everything that we have even said that you did not have for us to say, God. We're sorry for it, God. We repent of it. Change us, Father. Cleanse us, Lord. You said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. So forgive us for the very single things, Lord, that we have done that was not pleasing in your sight, God. And wash us clean from it. Help us to change our minds. Help us to change our hearts. That the posture of, that the posture of our hearts would always be to give you glory to do what it is that you want us to do to say what it is that you want us to say to move with how it is you want us to move God thank you for your grace and your mercy for our lives thank you oh God because you don't have to give us grace and you don't have to give us mercy but you do every single day thank you Jesus and thank you, Jesus, for praying for us, God. Right now, we lift up our prayer point to you, Father God, of having unfailing faith. Lord, so many different things come up against our faith. There are things going on in the world. There's things going on in the media. There's things going on in social media. There's things going on in our workplaces. There's things going on in our families. There's things going on in our relationships, God, that have come to test our faith. But we believe your word to be true. That he who has begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That although our faith may be tested, we still will have an expected end. That you designed our end from the beginning and the very things that you have called us to, the very purposes and callings that you have placed upon our lives, they will be fulfilled and we trust you in that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for praying for us. As you said in your word, Satan has obtained permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And that when you have returned to me, you would strengthen the faith of your brothers and sisters. Thank you, God, for praying for us that our faith would not fail. Thank you, Lord. Because you didn't even have to pray that prayer for us. But because you did, we can stand on knowing that your prayers avail. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we know, Jesus, you are righteous. 
You all the way. Like our righteousness that we have is filthy rags. Literally, our righteousness comes from you. So that we know that even your prayers availeth much for us. So help us in times, Lord, when the sifting and the shaking and, and the, the ups and downs and when all those things come up against us, help us to focus on you and you only. Your word says if we keep our mind stayed on you, you would keep us in perfect peace because we trust in you, Lord. Let that be our portion. Help us to keep our mind stayed on you and the things that you have called us to, the things that you have told us to remember in your word. Help us, God. We cannot do this without you. James said that we could ask for anything. And if we ask for faith and do not doubt, we could have it. Because those who doubt are tossed to and fro like the wind. So, Father, we ask you in this moment, without doubting, for your help with this walk. For your help along this journey. For your help to know that we are in alignment with you. That the things that we have, you have called us to do, we can do them. We can accomplish them. That it will be done. That the things that you have told us to say, they will be done. They will be said. That the things, the places that you have called us to go, Lord, we can go there. Regardless of any opposition. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening our faith in this moment. For giving us, Father, the power and the authority to trample upon any circumstance serpents or scorpions that will come up against us in this walk because your word says that we can trample upon them and that nothing will by any means hurt us your word also says that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world so help us to tap into that greater god that that thing that is greater greater than anything that may be happening on our jobs, greater than anything that may be happening in our finances, greater than anything that may be happening in our relationships, greater than anything that may be happening, Father God, even in our very own households. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Help us to tap into that greater. Help us to embody that greater. Help us to know that because of you, we can do anything. That because of you, nothing is impossible. What you can't do, God, does not even exist. And we can stand on that and we can trust you in that, God. So we thank you, Lord, for this moment where we are able to come boldly before your throne. And ask these things of you. So every care of our heart that we have yet to even mention on this live or even thinking secretly, things that we have yet to even pray, Father God, we ask that you answer even those things. That you lead us and guide us into the way of everlasting. And show us that you care for the cares of our hearts, God. Bless us on today. May something amazing and miraculous happen for us on today. May something beautiful and sweet happen happened to us on today that we know it was you and only you God we love you we honor you we praise you we give you all the glory Lord we give you all the worship Lord we give you all the honor because you are worthy Lord and there is really nobody like you thank you Jesus you're so sweet to us thank you Father, you're so loyal to us and we thank you. It is in your son, Jesus, matchless, mighty, wonderful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, y'all. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all, God loves us. He loves us so much. And every single thing, every single thing that may be on our hearts, we can bring those things to him because he cares for us. The Bible says in, um, I believe, 1 Peter 5 and 7, to cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Other translation says, cast your anxieties upon him for he cares for you. Hi, Deja. How you doing, girl? 
Like we can literally cast those things on God. Because he cares for us. Okay. Um, that is a good place to do trivia. So if you have been paying attention, taking notes, writing something down, it is trivia time. Okay. So, um, get your thumbs ready. You know, you got to be the first one in the comment section to get this right in order to win. Bless girl, been getting good news all week. Okay, come on, good news. I received that. I'm getting good news all week too. I received that. I speak that over my life. Getting good news all week. Okay, so for trivia today, I gave a scripture. I gave a scripture and I'm going to read that scripture and I want y'all to be able to tell me the um book chapter and verse of the scripture so give me the reference okay so it says you are from god little children and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world where can that scripture be found and don't go to google okay this ain't the time for that this is if you have been paying attention <laughs> to the bonus scriptures we gave outside of our key scriptures on today it says you are from god little children and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world and who's going to be the first to type that in do Okay, so China, you, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you because you write. So, you know, in the Bible, it has a few, well, in the New Testament, it has a few different Johns. You got John, then you got one, two, and three John. So this one is first John, but you did get the, the chapter, the book chapter in reference. Well, you got the chapter and the verse, right? But it's first John, not just, not just John, first John. But you still won, girl, because you knew what was up. You knew what was up. So DM me your cash app, China. Congratulations to you for being the trivia winner for this week's Warfare Wednesday. Okay, glory to God. Glory to God. All right, girl. So make sure you DM me your cash app. Good morning to anybody who has just joined in. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all so much for being here with me um for yet another warfare wednesday it's always amazing it's always great to have y'all here with me literally go going before the throne of grace each and every week to seek the father in prayer because so much warfare is going on every single day like literally when our basic scripture ephesians 6 10 through 20 he literally wants us to put on the full armor of god every single day because the stuff that's going on in the spirit world is happening at all times of the day okay of the day and night the spirit world doesn't sleep remember we are spiritual beings living a natural experience nothing that happens in the natural doesn't first happen in the spirit okay and so with all of that going on there's warfare i know every day you ain't gotta be all you know rah rah let's fight and all of that but you can say a simple prayer because even that simple prayer is you winning that war from a place of victory. Prayer is only winning the war. Prayer is winning the war that we face every single day. So thank you all for coming every single week to pray with me. This has been amazing and great and wonderful. And I love you all so much. But that's my time, y'all. Got to go. I love y'all so much. Happy Wednesday. Y'all go and have amazing rest of your weeks. Okay. I love y'all and I am out.